radical rant. Well, I had a great time in Seattle Hempfest, but I got to admit there was one part of Hempfest that uh, got me a little discouraged, and that has to do with the uh, situation in Washington State right now. You know, we kind of have an embarrassment of riches. It used to be that we were looking to see if there would be a marijuana legalization effort, and usually not even legalization, something like decrim or even lowest law enforcement priority we would be hoping for. But now out here in the West, we've got four states with at least two, some as many as four different initiatives that are trying to find a way to legalize marijuana. And up in Washington State, there are two that are kind of competing, and uh, it's a shame in the way that they are competing. Uh, the two are I-502, which you may have heard Rick Steves speaking about in our video earlier, and I-505. Now, here's the basic difference, and it kind of breaks down like this in all of the states with multiple initiatives. The 502 initiative is the one that would strictly regulate marijuana. It not only says that marijuana use is legal up to an ounce, but it says you know, how old you have to be, where it can be bought, how it can be sold, uh, and most controversially sets DUID limits, which I'm going to get back to in a second. The other frame of mind with I-505 is just to remove criminal penalties for marijuana. This is the uh, alcohol ending of alcohol prohibition model, uh, where we take away all the laws that say marijuana use is criminal. And then that's it. There is no specification of how old you have to be, uh, uh, where it's going to be sold, who's going to grow it, what your limits are. There's nothing. It's just all criminal laws are gone. Now, I have uh, good things and bad things to say about both initiatives. Uh, the only thing that I have to you know, warn both of them about is the tearing down of the other. I know how inflamed this battle gets uh, inside our own movement. Hell, I was a part of it during 2010 with Prop 19, and I didn't said some things that maybe weren't helpful also. So I'm trying to learn from my mistakes. Now, let me get to the uh, the 502 here for just a second, because the, the troubling thing in this initiative is the inclusion of a per se DUID standard for THC in the blood. And it is setting that at five nanograms per milliliter if you're 21 or over. Now, the problem with this uh, is that, and, and I understand what they're doing, the 502 people are concerned that the general public out there is not going to support an initiative that legalizes marijuana without being absolutely sure it doesn't lead to more stone drivers out there, that it doesn't lead to a, a stone driver epidemic, even though you and I both know that's not likely to happen. They think that those people need reassurances before they will vote for something. So I sympathize with the point and I agree with it. I think we do need to, uh, to reassure the average voter out there that doesn't know much about cannabis that we are serious about preventing impaired driving. But while I appreciate the sentiment, I believe the solution is the wrong one, particularly in light of what that went down in Denver just what, a month or two ago with their five nanogram per milliliter proposal. You'll remember that in that story, we had the pot critic from the Westward, uh, uh, William Breathes, who's a daily me medical marijuana consumer, abstain from marijuana use for 24 hours, documented, and then tested at 13 nanograms per milliliter. So in light of that, and in light of newly emerging information that the five nanogram per milliliter uh, level, which was thought to be, you know, the level at which we could tell recent use and uh, determine impairment, may only apply to those people that don't consume cannabis very often. That is to say, the regular chronic cannabis consumer could test at levels much above that and still be perfectly sober to drive. So with 502, they're asking you to vote for a, a standard that is not scientifically valid, that is not, you, you cannot back that, and in fact, would create criminals out of any regular marijuana user that would test above five nanograms per milliliter. Worse is the fact that there is a zero tolerance on the DUID if you're under the age of 21. Any nanograms per milliliter, you'll be considered an impaired driver. And since we know the majority of people using cannabis are under the age of 21, you know, 18 to 21 is a huge uh, demographic. It's not a majority, it's a plurality, excuse me. But it's, it's a huge demographic of cannabis users. And to be criminalizing them when they are not at all you know, impaired is very, very troubling. On the other hand, are those things enough for you to stand in front of people and be seen as a stoner against legalization and to be seen as someone that says, you know what? I can't let most people be free with an ounce. I just can't do that. Those people with an ounce are still going to have to suffer penalties because I'm worried about the stone driver thing. It's a question you're going to have to ask yourself. And here I'm, I'm willing to give everyone the information on this and let them know wh where these things go. 
Now, the other point uh, that is made by the 502 people with regard to 505 is the fact that just removing penalties and not specifying regulations after that and saying you're going to leave it up to the legislature, you're asking voters to trust their legislature, which is, you know, we've seen how they mess up stuff that they want to do. Here's something, marijuana distribution, they, they probably don't want to have anything to do with. What's that going to turn out like? Now, I understand their point. The 505 people's point is that by not putting regulations in that tell the state to break federal law, the federal government can't take it to court and preempt it. Preemption is when, you know, somebody passes a state law and the federal government says, no, 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 you can't do that. That's against the federal law. We're going to preempt you. We have the superior right here. So uh, I understand that argument from the, from the 505 people. By just removing the criminal penalties, it leaves the feds with the only peop- as being the only entity in Washington state that would have an anti-marijuana law, and the feds would have to spend the money to enforce it. And they're not going to. They're not going to spend that kind of money. So I understand that point, but can that pass? Can that pass? And the people from 502 are saying, no, it can't pass because while it would be very popular with us because it treats marijuana the way we think it should be treated because we know the truth about it, the general public just may not be ready to vote for that yet. So it's an interesting conundrum. We have on one side, 502, strictly regulating marijuana. In fact, far too strictly regulating marijuana and, and, and putting in unscientific DUID laws to try to mollify people afraid of what about the children and what about the stone drivers. And then on the other hand, we have something that's really nice as far as removing all penalties, but would it be you know just a pipe dream, if you'll pardon the pun, uh, with respect to whether or not enough people would support it? All I can tell you here is that I believe as reformers we should always support anything that moves us forward. And reg- if, if 502 passed and an ounce was legal... That's a game changer. The headlines won't be Washington passed a marijuana law that has a terrible DUID. The headline will be Washington legalized marijuana. And that to me is the most important thing. All right, thanks for joining us. This is Normal Show Live. The voice of the marijuana nation. We gotta go for Cannabis Carry, Cannabis Cure UK, and Wiz Coleco. I'm Radical Russ. We'll be back tomorrow with more news and interviews you can use for the cannabis community. And until next time, take care of each other, tokers.